All right, waiter101.com, uh, Justin here with a quick and dirty wine class for brand new waiters. So, this is gonna go fast, but it's gonna be super simple. Uh, starting from the very beginning, never had wine before, don't have any idea about it. Wine's made from grapes. We've got red grapes, we've got white grapes. Uh, there's red wine, there's white wine, there's also rosé wine, which has a little bit of the color from the skins, which is where all the pigment is, uh, that's left in and it ends up looking pink. Now, on rosé wines, these have a really wide range, so probably the first thing you think of is like a white Zinfandel. Uh, usually it's very sweet, they add sugar to it, and uh, that is probably your, usually like your lower priced stuff. Rosés can actually be very, very expensive. Then you have sparkling wines, which when they, whenever they're making the wine, they'll actually, the, the uh, bacteria that produces alcohol is trapped inside the bottle and it causes it to ferment with CO2 trapped inside and it makes it bubbly. Now there are some cheaper wines that they just add bubbles like you would add CO2 to soda, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about method champenois, which just means the method of champagne it's a region in France where they make champagne. And people use that same method to make sparkling wines in other places, but you can't call it champagne if it's not from that place. So where does that leave things like Cabernet, um, Chardonnay, things like that? So Cabernet Sauvignon is a red. Uh, Pinot Noir, let's see, Cab, Cabernet Sauvignon. And that is French for savage, savage grape, something like that. Um, Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir. And let's see, what's another popular one? Uh, Merlot. I'm not gonna give you a ton of these. I don't wanna get you all riled up. Rosé, we'll just leave that sparkling. You have things like champagne and you have some other stuff, but we'll just do that for now. So over here, white Chardonnay is a really popular white. Uh, Pinot Grigio. Grigio. Uh, Riesling. Riesling's really popular too. That's a sweeter one. And Pinot Grigio is kind of a lemony taste, a little more tart. Chardonnay is usually fairly rich. They do make a few that are kind of more of the lemony, but mostly your Chardonnays are gonna be a richer flavor. Uh, kind of buttery as a description they use sometimes. Cabernet Sauvignon is very dry and structured. It has a lot of different components. Pinot Noir is more fruity flavored. Uh, sometimes it can have like earthy smells to it. Merlot is usually pretty fruity. And that's kind of like, uh, well, best way to figure all this stuff out. All I can do in a video is just give you some of the words so that the words aren't quite as confusing and kind of sort things out. But the best method, if you wanna start learning wines, and if you don't like drinking, you can always just spit it out every time you taste something, but um, it's just to compare side by side. Just pick two things that are in a category together somehow, like pick one red and one white and taste each one and maybe have a drink of water in between. And then compare, what is a Merlot compared to a Cabernet? And pick something that's around the same price point, that way you're not comparing different quality levels. Um, and if you work at a restaurant currently and you're trying to learn this, start by learning the things that are on your menu. Just each day that you come in, ask if you can try, you know, this and this side by side and see, see what a Riesling versus a Pinot Grigio is like, Chardonnay versus a Pinot Grigio, something like that. Maybe try a couple of different of these and if you don't want to drink at all you can also just smell the smell so in wine tasting the main things that you look at are the sight of it what it looks like and the smell so sniff and sip how it feels in the mouth and then kind of an evaluation uh, savoring it kind of figuring out how all the components go together so if you want some additional resources for wine stuff um, got a few on waiter101.com slash blog. You've got some basic uh, flavor listings. You can look those kinds of things up online, different aromas that are common with it. Um, also, a color chart. You can find these and you'll have white wines range from green, straw, golden to amber, as dark as an amber color. 
Um, with the red wines, you've got purpley, kind of a purple color, ruby, garnet, red, and tawny, which is almost a brown hint to the reddish tone. Um, probably my favorite book for beginning people that want to learn about wine, and I'll have a link to this uh, somewhere on there, Wine from Grape to Glass. The reason I like it, um, a lot of people recommend Wine for Dummies, and I'll show you that book too, and I don't recommend it for your first book on wine. Pictures, lots and lots of pictures and explanations using pictures. This is a great coffee table book. There's awesome pictures in it, but it's also well-written, explains wine really well. That is the first book that I would get if you're trying to learn all about wines and make more money waiting tables. Uh, the Wine for Dummies book I would not do first, and that's because there are almost zero pictures. If you are good at reading and you like reading, this is a very thorough resource. And then the last book I would get, if you're really, really getting into wine, is some sort of an atlas. Uh, the World Atlas of Wine is this one. There's two, uh, two really popular ones, and I don't have a strong preference on those. But um, that's your quick and dirty wine class for brand new waiters. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. And if you have suggestions for uh, another topic that you'd like on the next video, let me know. Again, waiter101.com slash blog for some of these resources.